All right, today is another snowy, cold Pennsylvania day. But here's what we're going to work on today. I've taken care of the problem of the water getting in underneath the door a while ago. But as you can see, when the water used to come in under the door, it traveled along here, settled kind of in this spot, and then traveled along here, and then ponded right here. And by ponded, I mean like probably a quarter to a half inch pond and we're going to try to fix that today this is super smooth concrete but I am tired of it and our drain is over there yeah I know there's a whole bunch of dirt in front of it right now but uh, I'm sweeping up this area I moved all the four wheelers I'm going to show you how I mark it how I trial it um, and basically how I fix this but first step is to uh, get some water. Well, finish cleaning that up a little bit. You can see I filled up quite a pond, and I mean, like that's that's a pretty good splash. Before it flowed towards that drain, um, it didn't even flow to that drain. This water here was water I splashed, uh, and maybe it is making a little bit of a run. Well, now it's drying up over there. But anyway. Um, so this area here is the big area, but to get an idea of exactly where it all is, I'm going to have to let this sit for a minute and kind of dry and see where the water lays. Like I said, I started from where it used to come in, and it looks like, yeah, it's ponding right there. I mean, it's moving a little bit, but it's definitely roughed out. I'm going to let all this move and go lay however it likes. In the meantime, I'm going to go to the store, and I'm going to get some leveling compound, and I'll show you how I'm going to mark this out when I'm done. And we'll have to do a little prep to the floor, too. Alright, here we go. So, you can get the idea of the river. Flows through. And that there's the lake, and it's roughly six feet across, and you can see along the edges it's drying up, and that's going to show me where my low spot starts and ends pretty much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some chalk, kind of outline it. So that gives me a rough dimensional idea. Yeah, you can see it's it's drying up there in that top corner because you know water has some surface tension. So until it all settles, you know you don't know exactly where your points are. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is get some chalk, mark it out. We're gonna rough it up however the directions say, and then. Um, screed it and smooth it and hopefully it'll be better than what it is. I don't care too much. I mean this is a garage. I don't care too much if it paints a perfect match. If you want a perfect match to your existing concrete uh, you're more than likely going to have to paint the whole thing. You know epoxy it or whatever. Get somebody that's a little more professional than me. <laughs> but the, for this for my purposes uh, as long as the water doesn't just set, I'll be happy. I don't care if it, you know, is a little damp and it takes a little while to dry in this area. That's fine, but whenever you walk through, like that's what I'm trying to get rid of because that stays for days. It's really deep right there. You know what I mean? So if I can at least get rid of the lake, I'll be happy if I get rid of the whole thing. 
I'll be ecstatic. Like I said, th even this is pretty bad here. You know what I mean? Alright, time to mark it and get going. Alright. Uh, I know I said I get chalk, but uh, boundary marking paint wasn't that much more expensive. But you can see where all the low is. For sure. This is actually dry here. So I'm not going to worry too much about that because there shouldn't be too much more water coming in that door. I took care of that problem. The only reason there's water there now is because I sprayed it on the floor. But yeah, we're going to try to resurface all of this. All the way up to right in here. Because right here it seems to be drying up. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. And this was the where all the water, like it would flow from here down. So I think this from here down is going to dry. If it's just a touch low over here, I'm not going to worry about it. We're not trying to make it perfect. But the big thing is, I need to get rid of this lake. If I get rid of that lake, I'll be happy. But I'm going to go eat lunch. I'll show you what all I bought in a little bit. And uh, why I bought it. And we'll go over what we're going to do from here on. Alright, so we got two bags of Sacri. I think I'm only going to need one. But, you know, better... I can always return one if I don't use it. Uh, I got all my cement and mortaring tools. Uh, this is just stuff I've gathered up over the years. I have some magnesium floats and some, you know, finished floats, concrete floats, trowels. Um, some good stuff. You know what I mean? And, of course, I got my respirator, my safety glasses are on my head, and I got a diamond wheel and a grinder. And I bought a new grinder. I have a very good Milwaukee 7-inch grinder, but this thing was 70 bucks, and my Milwaukee was like three times that. And this one's got that one year I return it for any whatever reason warranty, and that's my plan because I don't want to burn up my uh, my super good Milwaukee. It's up there. Um, grinding this concrete, and I picked up a finished one by three. And the reason I picked a finished board. And check them whenever you do get them to make sure that it is as straight and flat as absolutely possible. And that is going to be what I'm going to uh, screet with. I thought about buying an aluminum screet because it right in here gets like over six feet, which is nuts. But hey, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, I don't even though it says self leveling, eh. I would still screed it. But we're going to mix it as per the manufacturer's instructions. That's why I got my one quart container. And the only thing it's missing right now are my knee pads. And that is honestly because I bought them a long time ago and now I'm trying to remember what I did with them. If I don't find them here in a minute, all I'm going to do is set my creeper down, which is over there. Set it on the floor. That way I can kind of sit Indian style and work. Um, I did have knee surgery recently. By recently I mean like September. But there's no sense in uh, tempting fate. You know what I mean? I'm not even sure if I can kneel with the knee pads. But we're going we're gonna to give this a try. Alright. Nothing to it but to do it. Alright. I'm sorry if you're having trouble hearing this, but I got a mask on right now, and it looks like I might actually have to touch up a few spots right there. But we're going to go back over this with uh, the pressure washer here in a minute. After I touch them, that I'm up a little bit, but yeah, it went a lot quicker than I thought. Uh, my initial idea was to leave the water on so that I could see, or uh, to keep the dust down. But unfortunately, that also made it really hard to tell where I was and where I wasn't. As you can tell, there was water laying here, and I couldn't. I missed the spot here, here, and there. So we're going to fix that, and then hit it with the pressure washer, and I'll catch up. Well, now you can see around. I'm sorry, now you can see around a little bit, but 
Um, I'm going to have to go back over this because I missed a lot. And I couldn't see it because of how muddy it was and how watery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeegee the water off. And hit it again. Hit all the spots I missed. And then pressure wash it again. And see if I can grind that out. Okay. Let's do it. Well, that took a couple tries, uh, just because, like every time I'd wash the floor away or hose it down with a pressure washer. Sorry, I lost my train of thought again. Uh, it would reveal more spots that I had missed, but I think that's pretty good. Uh, all this is is to give that new concrete a little bit better bite. I'll probably squeegee it off one more time, and then I think we're ready to lay down some lay down some layers. Uh, got my board all set up. Uh, yeah. Might be a little short now, but we'll make her do. Like said, anything's better than what I got. Okay, mixing. That was all two bags. I put over a bag right in here. That's insane. Um, we'll have to see how it cures. It's already starting. Um, this isn't like working with normal concrete in a normal concrete kind of a situation. Because, well number one, you don't have any defined borders. I, I'm not feathering, I'm trying to feather this out. I'm not really trying to uh, pour it against the form so that was difficult the second thing is, is you're pouring concrete on top of wet concrete and a lot of that water rose up and I'm not sure if that's gonna hurt me or not I guess we'll find out if I have to we'll do we'll revisit and maybe do some of this over again but it looks for the most part like I'm gonna have to go in the house I'll clean up my tools first off go in the house and then see what it takes to polish concrete because like a lot of the edges here like there, there it wouldn't be any form of concrete without some aggregate whether it be sand or whatnot else but you know some of them chunks were a little big and I mixed it for every bit what it said to and I noticed there was a lot of chunks in the first batch so when I mixed the second batch I went and got my more powerful drill to try to turn it with a little more force and a little more speed and I burnt the drill up but I mean Hey, excuse to buy a new one, right? 
All right, but at least it shouldn't pond here anymore. I mean, you can see all that that filled up there. I mean, that even went further than the water did. So I shouldn't have too much of a problem with it ponding anymore. But I'm going to see what it takes to get a concrete polished. All right. Okie dokie. Let's wash off some concrete and wash me up. All right. I might have fibbed a little bit. I didn't actually end up doing anything yesterday. The big thing is I'd rather have bumps in the concrete and ruin my concrete so I gave it another 24 hours this is what we got it seems a lot firmer than the days prior I'm going to sand these edges a little bit by hand and see where that gets me and then maybe sand a little bit in the center by hand and if that's going good then maybe I'll break out the power tools but not before that um, but I mean, honestly, like I worry about this job every time I walk away from it, but every time I come back, I'm reminded of how much better it was than what it was. I mean, it's not that bad. It doesn't match at all. I got that, which is what I expected. But all in all, once it dried, it's not that much rougher than what was there, except for the spot where I screwed up. So if you don't do my mistakes, you can have success with this. Matter of fact, I'm going to dig out my electronic level and see if it maintains pitch. Like, this way. I mean, even if it's flat, it won't be too bad. Because the water's not going to run off uphill. It'll run off down the hill. It just, you know... I, I, I just don't want a puddle anymore. I don't want puddles in my garage. Okay. Alright, my battery's about to die. But I sanded it a little bit. And I washed it all down, and I did another recording, and I'm not quite happy with it. So here goes the new recording. And before, when I used to walk across this whole area, it used to be like a half inch of water. Now, I mean, yeah, you heard that one little smirk, but that's it. And honestly, if I walk over here, I get the same amount. So... This is no worse than any other part of the garage. Now. And I'm pretty tickled with that. I mean, honestly, I would like to recess that a little more and bring in a machine and regrind the whole stupid thing. But for what it is, this works. And right now, I think I'm done messing with it. I'm going to let it cure another couple days and maybe coat it. Okay.